The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Sporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supplies sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Hello and welcome once again to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell icon and click all for alerts on new content. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this endeavour. Housekeeping as always, if adult language should offend you, you might want to disappear. You might want to go and do something else. Um, but we're going to discuss a few little things here, Ben and I. Um, wanted to do this for a little while, because obviously now the transfer window has opened and there's there's going to be a little bit of movement. I mean, it, it looks like, that as we recalled this, Tilo Kerr on his way to Monaco. There's whispers about Nayef Aguer and, and various other, other people. And then obviously we're going to need to get some reinforcements in through the door. So Ben and I are going to have a, a little discussion. We'd appreciate it if you guys could get your comments in the section below uh, of, about some of the players that we are going to mention. So, Ben, this uh, this all comes from an article that I saw a couple of days ago on a, on a website called Goal. And, and this particular piece was called um, 21 Premier League Players Who Most Need a January Transfer. Now, I'll be honest, some of them I look at and just go not realistic or not just just sort of like no I'm, I'm not really keen on this player there's a couple that have actually been linked with us and i wouldn't be averse to to exploring the possibilities of bringing in and i'd just quite like to have your opinion on it if i may right absolutely rob yeah i'm uh yeah really looking forward to this i mean obviously reviewing and previewing the games is, is great but um it's actually good to do something a bit different transfer window time's always quite exciting um, I think we need to strengthen. I think we need to ship some some deadwood out the club as well. And um, yeah, you know, actually, when I started thinking about it this afternoon, uh, I've managed to come up with quite a quite a long list of players that I rate. So um, be interesting to see whether they're on the the list that you've got from uh, the goal website. Okay, so if we go from top to bottom, uh, the first player that is on this particular list is a gentleman by the name of Calvin Phillips, Ben. Tell me, would he be someone that A, you think's realistic and B, that you think, even if it wasn't realistic, that you'd like to see? And why? At West well, Ham? look, it, it, funnily enough, mate, he is he is on my list. I, I, I do think we need to strengthen in central midfield. Um, just on the basis that I think we're we're a little bit short of numbers in that area, and it's such a such a demanding uh, position in the team. Um, uh, albeit, uh, it's someone I, I can see us being linked with. Um, I don't think we've been heavily linked with him this window, but I, I think we were linked with him a few years back, and um, mm. I think Moyes rates him. My only concern. Would be it that he, he wouldn't be top of my list. Um, you know, I had a, actually had a short list of probably five, four or five central midfielders, and he was probably bottom. Um, okay. I think, I, I think, you know, he, 
he's obviously a good player at Leeds. He's always done all right yep. for England, but I can't help feel that pretty much a two years of sitting on his ass doing nothing. Um, I'm just, I'm just not sure he's got the hunger for the game because I think he's been happy to sit there and pick up the paycheck. And uh, for me, I've actually written some notes down. That is what I want, number one, from the players coming in. Because I'm looking at the likes of Ben Rama and Four Nails, and they just look like they've lost the hunger. I want someone coming in ready to really rip up trees. And I don't think Calvin Phillips is going to do it. Do you not think that, though, the fact that we've got a Euros not too far down the track might be a little bit of an incentive for him to really sort of like hit hit the strap sort of thing and, and sort of impress if he gets the opportunity wherever he goes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, look, I mean, as a, an England fan, I'd, I'd like him to get a move and get games under his belt. I'd, I just think that um, there's... There's a couple of better options that I think are available in that area of the pitch. Um, so Phillips, albeit that he's on my short list, he's not sort of the top central midfield target that I've got. OK, that's that's fair enough. So we move on to the next one on the list. Give me your thoughts on Jaden Sancho. Interesting, yeah, because he, he is on my list. Um I think we have been linked with him. I mean, every yep. you know, it's silly season. Everyone's going to get linked with everyone. Uh, he he's on my list, but again, he's a little bit like Phillips. Mm. That well, fun, fundamentally, there'll probably be some bigger clubs interested in Sancho than us. I, I think I, I think Dortmund will probably be interested in him again, and he might be happy to yep. go back there. Um, for me. It's a bit of it's very similar to the Lingard deal, isn't it? In the respect, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a tournament coming up, he's at Man United, he's fell out of favour with the manager. I'd I'd just be a little bit concerned again that he might have a bit of an attitude problem. It looks like that's you know, he's been banished to the train with the youth team at Man United. And um I think everyone at Man United at the minute looks a bit like they've got a bit of an attitude problem. So, so again, I was listing out potentials. I actually think left wing is our most critical position on the pitch I to agree. strengthen. And, and, and the reason for that is we need to get Paqueta back in the middle. Yeah, we are, you know, we're slowly seeing that, you know, Paqueta is a massive asset and he is out wide, but I just think, if we can get him back in the middle, all of a sudden we've got a different dimension to our play. So, so I think getting Ben Rama out and maybe Four Nails out, I think the pair of them can go. As far as I'm concerned, and let's go all out for a, a, a good quality left winger. Sancho was on the list, but he's not actually in the. Uh, I've got a short list of three uh, that we'll come on to after, and uh, he doesn't make the cut, unfortunately. Mm. Well, the next one in this article, and I'm not quite sure that this is a position that actually does need strengthening, but I'll mention this particular player. And I think it's probably fair to say he does probably need to move on again for, the, you know, we referenced the Euros coming up. Talk to me about Aaron Ramsdale. Um, do you know what? I've got a lot of Arsenal fan mates and they, as well as myself, everyone's bemused at how this lad has been treated. You know, he was, I think, in the team of the season last season. Um, and he's just been bombed. And Raya has come in and he ain't looked that great. And um, I just feel like Ramsdale done nothing, you know, didn't warrant getting benched. No. Um I find the thing is a very odd one. However, you know, ordinarily I would say yes, but I just think Alphonse Ariola is our number one and we don't need to strengthen in that area. So um, Fab, Fab is still doing the business as number two and, um, you know, we don't need Ramsdale. So, so no, it's not someone I'm really considering. Anthony Martial. <laughs> 
Um, Do I suspect this isn't going to take that long? No, I mean, look. Yeah, the lad, years ago, I'd have said so. Probably, yeah. I mean, look, the lad just needs a fresh start. Um, but like I said, Rob, the, the 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 objective on my list is hungry. I want I want players coming in, yeah, you know, not all the case, but quite young, fresh, that want to prove themselves in the Premier League. And uh, Martial doesn't fit that bill in the slightest to me. So no, don't want to go near that lad. Trevor Chalabar. Um, no, um, he's not someone that I really thought about. Uh, he might need a move. Was he a centre back, central midfielder, yes. or centre back? Um, no, uh, you know, I do think that's an area we need to strengthen in uh, for a number of reasons. Like when you when you actually think about it, um, Care has just been sold or loaned out. Um, again, there's there's rumours he's uh, wants out or might be interested in, in a move. Zuma don't look that he can play regularly, so that's kind of leaving you with old man of Bonner, who is doing great, but you know he's not going to last forever. And Mavropanos, who's still finding his feet. So um, I think it's a real area of the pitch we need strengthen. But Trevor Chalaber's not on my short list i've only got a couple of players that i think i'd be interested in and uh he's not one of them so the next one on the list we're going to discuss then now this is a player that when i saw his name i gotta be honest i didn't really look at it and go oh yeah i know all about this guy but i've i've done a little bit of, of digging uh his name's sergio gomez and he's a place for manchester city and he's down on wikipedia as a left wing back slash attacking midfielder, uh, twenty three mm. years of age, and he is a Spanish under twenty one international. Um, no, he's, he's not someone I'm really familiar with, Rob. And um, I'm sure if he's from City, he's a quality player. But um, no, it's not. I, I not can't really this. say. Can't really comment so much on that, lad. No. Um, this is a player we were linked with uh, maybe a year or so ago, Arna Danjuma. Ah, interesting. So th th this is intriguing now because he, uh, it, uh, in my left wing shortlist, he is one of three that I think we should be interested in. Um, mm. Yeah, you know, I think he, he's he been around a bit, was at Bournemouth. Uh, scored goals, went to Villarreal, I think scored about 20 goals in La Liga, uh, but then went to Tottenham on loan, didn't get a sniff, went to it, he's gone to Everton on loan. So you're kind of thinking, well, if he couldn't get into Everton, why would we go for him? I actually watched, I actually watched him in the cup um last night, and he impressed. He impressed. I think he, he's quick, he's he knows where the goal is, he's quite direct. So he he's um probably Probably joint second on my uh, short list for the left wing position, and um, yeah, I think if Ben Rama goes, we should seriously be considering Dan Juma. I think he's a good player. Now, this next player, as I recalled this, I suspect that this is if it isn't a done deal already, it's about to be a done deal. But he's on this this article's list. Eric Dyer. <laughs> Um, we had been linked with him, you know, however strongly. Where, where's it looking he might end up, Rob? Bayern Munich, would you believe? Well, this, well, this is it. Like, I, I, I think, Kane, mate, so yeah, I, I think it's a bit of a low risk signing. He's not going to cost you a lot, and he can cover centre back and central midfield. He's got a wealth of experience, he's strong. Um, I think he's going to go by Munich by the look of it, but I, I think it 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 smacks to me a bit of a Dawson signing because it would be an unglamorous one, and a lot of our fan base would turn their nose up at it. But he's the sort of player that I think Moyes would get doing the business. So uh, you know, he wouldn't be my number one choice, but I, I would consider Eric Dyer, Donny Van der Beek. <laughs> no. Move on. Move on. I mean, the lad, um, 
he's obviously a talented player, but he's been rotting at Man United, and I think that you know he he wouldn't he wouldn't like the place up. I think there's better out there. Uh, again, not a position I think we need to really look at, but again, he's on the list. Queeving Kelleher. Nah. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Reese Nelson. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's, he, he, he was on my list again, and I think he's um, is a, is a good, talented player that needs a move. He needs to, he needs to be have a run of games because I think he's a good goal scorer. And uh, I think he scored, he was on PSV or Feyenoord and banged him in a few years back and then never got too much of an opportunity at Arsenal. And he, and he probably never will. He's on my short list. I've probably got five or six wingers. Um, he's on the short list, but he's not. Um, he doesn't make the top three cut. And, and, and you know, I'm just not sure Arsenal would sell him. Hmm. Fair enough. Joao Palinia. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a very, very good player. But... Um, I think it'd be out of our price range. I think yeah, I think he's going to cost about seventy million quid. Um, so, and I think I think Bayern Munich were linked with him before. Um, I, you know, I have to be honest and say he's probably going to end up a, a, a Champions League side if he moves on from Fulham. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that statement. But Nuno Tavares. Um. I don't know. When I've seen him, he actually looks all right. I don't know. He's fell out of favour with Arsenal, but I think Emerson is our first choice left back. And I'm happy with Ben Johnson as replacement. So uh, Nuno Tavares is not, not someone I think we should be going for. Well, this next one on the list, I can tell you straight away, I don't think we're going to go for because his name's T. Lo <laughs> So we'll skip that one. Ian Matson. Interesting, yeah. I think we've been linked with him. Um, but I just don't think I don't think a left back is a priority position. I think like say Emerson's uh, number one, Ben Johnson's an able deputy for both fullback positions. So I'm happy to stick with him. I mean Aaron Cresswell's still around, but I don't think he's going to be around for much longer. I've been a great servant. But no, Ian Matson. I don't think we need him. Again, the next one is one that we're going to go past very quickly because his name's Maxwell Cornet. So we'll move on there. Um, yeah. Ben Godfrey. Um, yeah. Young lad that needs a move. Uh, but no, I think Everton seem to have a lot of centre-backs. And um, I no, I think he's I think he, he's not a bad player, but I think there's um, there's better centre halves that I'd like to target. Next one's another centre half, Rob Holding. <laughs> Fuck he's on know, the list. I, I had to put his name out. Amanda Holden. I, I'll go. Yeah, for that'll her. do. Not, not fucking Rob Holding. That's for sure. Um, nah. No, thank you. Moving on. Andre Santos. Who the fuck's he? <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's on loan at Nottingham Forest at the moment, but he's made only two appearances uh, this season, according to this article. Uh, he's, actually, no. he's actually Chelsea's player. Um, oh, right. No, no. I mean, listen... The name sounds fantastic. I'm sure the name sounds like he should be the fucking the next coming of Pele, but yeah. unfortunately, fucking that that uh, don't cut it. No, fair. Malang Sar. That sounds like saying you get down the fucking tire takeaway. Um, Chelsea player. No, mate. No, I don't. No, not interested in him. Oh, this this last one is going to get people sort of like saying, oh, that's it. We're not going to watch this fucking channel again. Uh, but he's on the list. Jesse Lingard. 
Oh, no, mate. I think, look, we've, we've done that. I wouldn't be shocked if Moyes did, you know. Well, yeah, we've, look, we've been around the asses with Jesse Lingard um, and we've moved on. So we don't go back. Um, you, you don't go back to... Uh, you don't go back to a company you've worked for or a, a woman that's jilted you, so you, you don't go back to a player that's fucked you about. Okay, so that's that's this article gone through and scrutinised, and you obviously give us your opinion on that. Now, you referenced a little list that you've made up yourself, so yes. talk to me. Give me your list. Okay, mate. So I think what I'll start off briefly with is um, some outgoings. And then that'll give us a broad budget that I think we're going to be working within. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so I, I would say outgoings for me, uh, I touched on it earlier, would be Ben Rama and Fournells. Yep. I think we just, you know, I think we're all, you know, I, I don't think there's one West Ham fan that could say either of them have really performed this season. Yeah. So I think if we can get both of them out, in and around 30 mil for the pair, I'd, I'd be happy. Think we're going to get that? Well, I think I think we could easily get 20 for side Ben Rama. I know, you know, maybe at a push and maybe 10 for Pablo, which, you know, wow. in today's climate is fucking peanuts, really, isn't it? 10 million quid for, for someone who's got a lot of experience. I think you'd go back to Spain and maybe Ben Rama to France. But you know, give or take 30 mil. Um, We've said care has gone. That's a loan, so I'm not even yep. counting. We're getting any money for that, really. Yeah, um, it's half a million. I think it's the loan fee, and I think it's the uh, eleven million pounds or euros for the if they buy. Uh, I would say a gird. I mean, I can't remember what we bought a gird for. Probably about thirty-five mil. I thought um, it was about twenty-seven, give or take. But I might be wrong. Twenty-seven. I would say. Listen, <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't been a flunk. But I wouldn't say he's pulled up trees. But I'd say in terms of rate of inflation, we should be looking at about 40 mil for a good. We, you know, we should be looking to get slightly more than what we paid for him. Hmm. Otherwise, we don't do the deal. Um, and I would say maybe five mil for Corne if we ship him out. So broadly speaking, that's about 70, 75 million quid in hmm. the kitty. Yeah, from yeah. getting rid of those four or five players. Plus, you're hoping, we're hoping, you know, you're hoping, we, we sold rice, we sold Skamaka in the summer, and we didn't spend all that money. So there should be a bit of money. We should have, to, you know, if we flogged all them, plus bit 20 million maybe, we should have 90 to 100 mil, which is, you know, not an insignificant budget to do a bit of business in January, I think. So... And then, and plus, depending on if we bring in a striker, I'd be loaning out Divin Mabama. Um, I think, look, um, I hope he's good enough. We don't know if he's quite good enough in the men's game. Yeah. Mm. I think he needs a loan out in the championship just to fucking cone his craft. There's no yep. good, there's no, it's no good for him just coming on with 10 minutes to go when we're, we're trying to defend a, a lead. And we're just sitting back and he's just running around like a headless chicken. So I want him to, to go out on loan if we can bring a striker in. Um, only and one I, problem. I, uh, There's only one problem. His contract's on. up in the summer, isn't it? True. Yeah, I think I don't. Yeah, in, in that, I think it would be one of these sign a contract and put him out on loan. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? The. Uh, I haven't gone. I think we do need a striker. I'd agree. But I'm not sure anyone. Listen, I'm sure there's loads of strikers out there in the world. Yeah. But there's none that I really know too much about that I think. I think January is a difficult time to do business. And do you know who I'd be potentially looking to bring in on a on. loan deal to the end of the season that I've seen might be available? Roberto Firmino. Oh, you know, I just think Bowen's doing well. Antonio's coming back. You know, we either keep those two and Mabama, but I think Firmino could be 
a, an interesting option because I'm hearing that he's in Saudi and he's not that happy. And I still think he could do a job and nick a few goals. So that would be a potential striking option. Interesting. But, albeit that, um, <laughs> oddly, I was going through my list. Out of one, two, three, four, four. Out of five positions to strengthen in, striker was actually bottom of the list for me because okay. I just feel like we're scoring goals regardless. Um, so so I think we need to strengthen left wing, central midfield, centre back, potentially right back and striker in, in that priority in that order. order. So, so <clears throat> left wing is my priority. And I'll, I'll go through some of the names that I... There, there's a common theme on my list is that mm -hmm. a lot of them are English. Um, a lot of them are championship players because I, I, I like that as the strategy. It's work with Bowen, yeah. work with Antonio, work with Cresswell, work with numerous players that we've bought and other teams have bought. Yeah. And I just think they're, they're hungry to prove how good they are. So my left wing shortlist, Sancho was on it. Reese Nelson was on it that we've, we've talked about. Jack Clark from Sunderland was on it. Ooh. And Jaden Philogen from Hull, some young lads that are sort of doing, doing bits in, in the wing position. But, the, but none of them made the cut for me. So I think that the three, there's three that spring to mind and it's difficult to, to really choose between the three. Uh, one of them's on out Dan Juma, who we've touched on. Yep. Uh, the other one is Emil Smith Rowe, who that I think is too good a player to just be sitting on the bench and not really getting it fucking any opportunity at Arsenal. Even okay. when they're even when they're fucking, you know, need a goal, they don't really look to him. They're bringing on Enketia and Reese Nelson and this lad's career is stagnating. Yeah. Uh, so he's probably he's probably number two, and I'm going to throw a curveball of a player like that this. is that is <laughs> that is in the championship. What I was doing, Rob? You know, you give me. You said you took the piss out of my tech. I've been doing a bit of research. Um, one of the me take top, the piss. <laughs> One of the top attacking midfielders, wingers in the championship with tw from 23 games has got 12 goals and six assists. So 18 goal involvements in 23 games. He's not English, but he's played in the Premier League before. He's mm -hmm. Chrysencho Somerville from Leeds. Oh, I like this player. So, so do you know what? I, I just remember him a little bit last season and he looked raw. He looked raw, um, I think maybe first season in the Premier League, but I keep just hearing his name flash up. And I believe he's got a £20 million release clause in his contract. That's nice, um, well, You know, I think he, he had a release clause that if they got relegated, he could go for 20 mil, I believe. And obviously they did get relegated. I believe that... Um, Palace were strongly linked with him in the summer if they sold Michael Elise. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I genuinely think that if we nick this lad for 20 mil within a season or two, it'd be worth double. Um, and, and, you know, he's 22, he's Dutch. Like I say, he's, he's, he's learning his craft in the, in the English league. And actually, I think it's a really exciting signing that we could get. He would be my number one choice at left wing. I think is it, I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Crescentio Somerville. And fuck yep. me, that's a good name as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I remember watching him for Leeds. Quick, direct, doesn't seem to play with any apprehension or fear. I I, I was impressed with him, actually. when I Whenever I watched Leeds, and I, I didn't watch them intently. I'm not a Leeds fan, but... Yeah. I remember watching him and thinking, do you know what? That's a player that I'd yeah. be quite happy to see in the Claret and Blue of West Ham. Yeah. So I'd be all over that. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I'll tell you, you know, it just, 
it ticks a lot of boxes for me. And um, he'd be my number one with Smith Rowe, Dan Juma closely behind him. Um, so that would, that would be my number one choice left wing. I'd then move into central midfield that I think is a you know, an area that we could do with strengthening. So I've got three players and they're all... These, these players are all from different areas of spectrum. It's a bit of an interesting one. So I... One of the, the, the so Calvin Phillips are considered. Um, mm. There's a few others that are considered, but there's, there's three on my list. One of them already plays for us, right? And that's Flynn Downs. <laughs> <laughs> I like Whatever Flynn happened Downs. To him. I like Flynn Downs. I think he's obviously went out to Southampton on loan, and. Um, I think we could do with him in terms of the number of games that are thick and fast. Yeah. Um, I think he's very unlucky. Moyes, it was like Moyes just had it in for him, and I can't work out why. He would like he'd play him out of position. He's he's a fucking defensive midfielder. We'd be playing him as a number 10. And I remember still... I was at Old Trafford when he played as a 10 last season. Yeah. Ridiculous. And, and to be honest, every time he played, he's when I see him. Even when he was out of position, he was one of our best players. But he, yeah. and then and then he'd just be on the bench. Um, so Downs would be one. Um, I then go to one that might not be the most inspiring of signings, but I've, there's a, there's method to my madness here. Yeah, is the game against Brighton highlighted for me that we could do with a technical ball player within the squad that I think we're lacking. This is a player who has been, you know, been in a Premier League a long time. He's not getting the game time at his current club, um, but I think he's well in his to his thirties. And that's Andre Gomez from Everton. He would, you know, he's not the long term solution. But the reason I'm saying that is, I think the long term solution is in the form of Freddie Potts, who's on loan. Um, so I don't think we necessarily need someone to come in and be a mainstay for three, four years, because I actually think Freddie Potts can be that player within a year or two. And Andre Gomez can fill in as a squad option in that time. Got it. Um, so that that's a bit of an option. But the number one central midfield choice. Now, I didn't think we could get this guy. But I keep hearing that regardless of how much he's playing for his club, he is available for £40 million, and that's Conor Gallagher. Oh, yes. I've heard, so I've I, heard he is available. Yeah. Now, that surprises me because he's the captain of Chelsea at the moment. He is. Yeah. So it, it baffles me that he would be available. But this guy, he impresses me more and more every time I see him play. I think he's got an engine. He's got a good shot. He's a, he's attack. He reminds me of Scott Parker. That's who he reminds me of. And we, we've just been talking about Scott Parker earlier. We did. We did. I, I, I just feel like you called me a rude um, word. I, I just feel like he's if he he's going to cost forty mil apparently, but I think if he's available, you've got to go and fucking get him. You know what I mean? You've just you know. He can do everything, and you know, I just, I just feel like if he's available, he's a Moyes type player. He's young, he's English, he's hungry. Um, if he's available, you've got, to, you've got to try and get him. Yeah, and I think that, I think you're right. I think he would be a, a player that that fills a, a gap that I think is a glaringly obvious gap. In, in the sort of central midfield position, his type of player. Um, but I also think the fact that he is Chelsea's captain, personally, I, I think that that also would be something of a bonus, you know, because he's got leadership experience. Limited, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. But he he's there's obviously been something that Pochettino has seen in the makeup of Conor Gallagher that's led him to give him the captain's armband, but it is a little bit sort of contrary that you're like, okay, here's the captain's armband, but in the next transfer window, potentially I might sell you. It's really strange. Mm. I don't know whether it's because they just need to balance the books because they've got an, a hugely inflated 
squad and maybe he's the low hanging fruit. I don't know, but yeah, he's someone I'd I... consider, mate. Yeah, no, I think. Um, I, listen, I think if he is available, there'll be a, there'll be a queue of clubs lining up for him. I think I think I've heard Spurs would be in for him. So so look, Gallagher would be a good option. Um, I then move on to centre halves, mm -hmm. and I'm sticking with the English. I'm sticking with Premier League experience. Um, yeah, because they're the players I know. You know. I, like players in France, Jonathan Tarr and this, that and the other. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, and um, I just think uh, a care has gone. Again, there's a, there's a doubt. We've been linked with Max Kilman and he ticks a lot of boxes. I must admit. I, this kid for years. I, I haven't seen him in the flesh much. Um, I like the look of him, but he, He's actually my number two choice. I think he's 26. He's the captain. He, you know, that would be the, the profile that I go for. But actually, there's there's one player that is slightly ahead of him in the queue for me. And I think we can get him for much less money. He's similar profile. He's a big lump. He's playing in the Premier League week in, week out. He's out of contract in the summer. And that is Tosin Adaribio. I think that's how you say his name. Easy from for Fulham. you to say. Yes. <laughs> Tosin. I'm just going to call him Tosin from now Yeah, on. Let's, let's, let's just stick with Tosin. Tosin, yeah. Listen, I think he's six foot five. Yep. Um, he's 26. He's played, you know, he's got 160 games under his belt um, in senior football. Come through the Man City youth ranks. He's impressed he me every time. Just the other week, didn't he? Did he? Did he? Um, or he was one of the five. Well, mate, put it this way: I was at that game, and we didn't get a sniff, and he was part of that. So, so I think the two the two standout centre halves for me are Kilman and Tosin, and I'd be sniffing around the pair of them, especially if we're thinking of letting a girl go. And um, I actually. I actually think both of them are better than the Gerd. It, you know, and they're a better option for me in the team. And then that really brings me to just finish off right back, potentially. And um, I just like the look of Carl Walker Peters from Southampton. He just looks, he just looks so composed every time I see him play. Like he just, he, he gets some assists. I think you could nick him for 10 mil. I think, you know, I, I've just rattled through them, Rob. So I'm thinking Somerville, 20 million. Yeah. Conor Gallagher, 40 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Tosin you could get for 15 on the basis he back. he's out of contract in the summer. Yeah. Um, I think Carl Walker Peters is probably around 10 to 15 million. And for Menio, if we got him on a loan deal, so that that's an, a net outlay of about eighty-five to ninety million, and that's what I think we could potentially have in the coffers, based on rejigging. And I think uh, if we could get, if we could strengthen those four or five areas, we'll have a real chance of uh, a, a good European campaign. And, and who knows? OK, let's suspend disbelief for a moment and let's suppose that your dream comes to fruition. Ben Rama, Fournells, Cornet, all of the dead wood is shipped off. We get the money in that you think we're going to get and we make these signings that you've, you've advocated for. What would therefore be a reasonable expectation as to where we would finish in the league and what we where what success looks like in the Europa League, in your opinion? Look, I, I look, I, I, I think you, you never know, mate. Look, I think success in the league would be cementing our place where we are, right? I think sixth would be a, a map, a big success. If we finish sixth, that means. The, the likelihood is Man United, Newcastle, Chelsea, 
Brighton all finish below us. And if we do, that's a fucking good season. Um, yeah. You know, you know, so so bringing these players in doesn't guarantee you to get you any higher. Um, maybe a position or two, but then that means, that means, you know, potentially getting in the Champions League, which we've never done. Um, and and someone like Arsenal dropping out. I mean, that would be amazing. I mean, if we could, if we could, that, oh, fucking hell, that would be my dream come true. If, if Rice goes to Arsenal and we finish the <laughs> I knew his name would yeah. crop up. <laughs> so, um, so look, look, I'm not greedy. Um, you know, top six, um, semi final of the Europa League, potentially, and fucking winning the FA Cup. I mean, we, we, you know, we're we've just won a cup. Let's fucking try and win another one. Let's keep that winning feeling going. And I think, um, I think it's time to be fucking ambitious and roll the dice because, and, and, and like I've just rattled out, I don't think our net expenditure, it's not like I'm saying, let's go and spend hundred million. What I'm saying is let's go and fucking sell this Deadwood for 70. We've got 20 mil fucking down the back of the sofa anyway. Let's just fucking consolidate it. Bring these players in. That all of these players want a move, or you know, do, do you know what I mean? Tosin's not signing a contract. Carl Walker Peters is, and some of you are playing in the championship. Don't fucking jump at the move. Gallagher probably doesn't want to move, but Chelsea might need to flog him. So I think all of these players are realistic and hungry to uh, succeed. So. That's my list of who I'd go for. Um, maybe over the next few days, I'll I'll r- rattle off what your list should be. <laughs> well, no, my my job's the presenter. That, we've got <laughs> oh, our roles no, here. We've got our roles. No, mate, it's it's always important to mix, change it up. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. We'll we'll do a little swapperoo, and uh, I'll, I'll I will do some research. And there might be some names that we're aligned on because there there are some names that you mentioned. Like I said, Somerville, yeah, ab- absolutely. I'd I'd be all over that. Um, Connor Gallagher, yep. I think he ticks a number of boxes. Walker Peters, I think decent. I think probably the only thing that would make me recoil a little bit is, is signing anyone that's linked with that lot. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Spuds, you know. It's like when Eric Dyer's name come up, I was just like, Mm. Yeah, dirty. no, but there you go. Anyway, so, but what do you guys at home think? I mean, you're watching this, hopefully, and obviously, I've mentioned the guys on on this article on on Goal website, and then Ben's obviously mentioned his the guys on his list. So, pick anyone. You know, if you if you're watching this, put in the comment section below what you think about the names that have been mentioned in the article that I've referenced or indeed the ones that Ben's picked. What do you think? Get your comments in. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for joining us. And please don't forget to like, comment on, and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell icon and click all for alerts of new content. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this endeavour. I'm going to disappear and uh, we will see you. um, We're going to do the match preview for the Bristol City game probably tomorrow, I'm guessing, Ben. Yeah, mate. Yeah, we'll do Uh, that tomorrow. But by the time they watch this, we'll have probably already done that, which means that we've, yeah, we've travelled in time. (laughs) There you go. Back to the future. So uh, all good. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and appreciate your support. Come on, you Irons. The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Sporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details industry.
Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. <laughs> um, some some people might you know turn their nose up at him, but I I rate him as a footballer. I think he's quality, and and the reason I, I think of him is sorry, Ben. I, I'm doing a recording. Do you mind? I can watch that any fucking time. Yeah, I'll edit this bit out. Fuck's sake! She knows I'm recording. Oh, you got to see this goal. Fuck them! It's Tottenham. Cunts. <laughs> Anyway, so I, I'd consider Andre Gomez. Um, 